Hello everyone. So it has been an interesting weekend for me. Um Thursday last week. Um I was having some sensitivity in my arms. Um and have been dealing with some sensitivity in my knees for the last few weeks and just kind of filed it away in the back of my head and kept going. Um, well, the temperature here has really dropped. Um, we're sitting in the 50s to 60s, which is amazing weather. I love this weather. My body, on the other hand, does not. Um, Friday and Saturday, I was in some discomfort. Um, just kind of achy, not really my normal active self. Um, but I just kind of went, ah, it's been a long week. It's almost break. It's part of that. Well, Saturday and Sunday all day it rained. By Monday, I couldn't deny it any further. I am in a fibromyalgia flare-up. Uh, and that just means that overall, everything hurts. Um, it's chilly, so I am wearing long sleeves. But I had to pick a um, shirt that doesn't have a lot of pilling or anything else. Because if it rubs on my skin, it's just going to be very uncomfortable. For those of you who don't know, fibromyalgia is a autoimmune um, disorder where your nerves um, are overreactive, basically. Uh, mine normally presents mostly in my joints, so um, almost like arthritis um, without it actually being arthritis. Uh, just those nerves are extra sensitive right now um the nerves on the back of my arms are very sensitive um and i have a lot more areas on my body that even just a light touch will trigger pain so and then add to all of that i'm tired because i'm not sleeping as well so the fatigue that comes with it and then fatigue added to that of dealing with being in pain. But I took some, um, a leave and that should help. Uh, it's been mm, almost four hours since I took it. So it definitely is as good as it's going to get. But we are getting ready to drive out to my parents' house. And so I have some stuff that I need to do to get the house ready, um, to get me ready, get my daughter, make sure my daughter is ready. Um, my husband's actually staying to take care of the animals and his parents and work stuff. So, um, ooh, that hurt. <sighs> yeah, even just scratching an itchy spot can be very painful. Um, but so I'm going to try to use this time, um, to get as, what I can done. Um, I do have to be on this tightrope of, I need to move enough to help relieve the pain, but not move too much to exasperate the pain. Um, and it's a very delicate line some days. So, I am going to start kind of doing like a Sunday reset, even though it's Wednesday. Um, so that the house is in a way that my husband can, um, maintain while we're gone. And he's not going, everything's cluttered, everything's cluttered while we're gone. So I'm going to start putting some stuff away uh, and I am going to listen to um, the Lions of Fifth Avenue. 
This is a historical fiction that's following two timelines. You have the you have one main character who's in the 1930s, I believe, and the other is in the 1990s, if I remember correctly. Um, and it's a grandmother and granddaughter, and they um, work with the library uh, on Fifth Avenue that does a lot of things for the community. Um, you know, has displays and things, but things start getting a little weird, and so they um, are trying to figure out what's going on. So, I'm going to put that on on my audio, and I'm going to get some cleaning done. Um, so, feel free to see my reset. If not, feel free to skip it. I'll check in in a little bit. I wanted to give an update on um, Lions of Fifth Avenue. I am really enjoying this one. Um, there's a lot to do with missing manuscripts throughout it. Um, it's kind of a neat uh, concept and no one knows where these manuscripts have gone. Um, and the neat part is, is One's in 1913, and the other is in 1993. So this is 80 years difference between these two very important manuscripts going missing. Um, but somehow I'm feeling it's going to be connected. So um, I am 100 pages, which is about 30%, um, a third through the book. Um, I think it's a total of 340 pages. Um, so I'm going to keep reading. I am going to try, try, um, to finish this by tomorrow night when I go to bed. Um, we'll just have to see how it goes. Today has been a much better day with my fibro. Um, taking that Aleve first thing this morning really seems to have helped. Oh, I'm very low in pain um but I'll probably go to bed early again tonight just because it tends to wear me down a little bit 
Um, but that's kind of all I have to report right now. Um, I am gonna, um, pack my bag for this weekend, um, and kind of go from there. So, I will check in later. Hello everyone. So, yesterday I made a 13 hour drive, um, and I finished the lines of Fifth Avenue, um, this was a really cool um, book. I really enjoyed my time in it. Um, and I love how everything just kind of cam comes together. So you have 1913, some books start disappearing from the Fifth Avenue Library in New York and um, then in 1993, books start disappearing again. Everything ends up kind of connecting together and finding those, um, interweavings was a lot of fun. So I really have enjoyed my time with it. I did try in the car yesterday to listen to... Red Sister, um, but apparently that is one that I'm having to follow along. Oh, that I have to follow along as I read, or else I kind of zone out. Um, so I have the ebook on my phone, and I'm reading that while listening to it. Um. I like the audiobook because it's helping with a lot of the names. A lot of the names you see, you would think they're pronounced one way and they are not. Um, and so it, it's kind of nice to have the audiobook there. Um, but that being said, I'm going to get back into it. Um, so far, all that's happened is we have uh, Nona, and she is um, kind of going into her backstory a little bit of how she ended up um, at the gallows as a young child. Um, and so it's kind of a neat um, a neat premise. Um, so I'm going to keep reading and see where this goes and try not to fall asleep because that's where I feel my body is going. So I will check in later. So it, it is Tuesday night. All of us keep saying Wednesday night. Um, it is Tuesday night. I am 67% in Red Sister. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's kind of neat to see some of these things come full circle that are going on in the, um, book. But I don't know how much is going to get read tomorrow, um. Tomorrow is cooking day for, uh, to get ready for Thanksgiving. So, um, but it's, it's late and I'm tired, so I am going to bed. Um, and hopefully we'll update by the time I finish the book. Hello everyone. So it is Wednesday night. Uh, we did a lot of cooking today. But we also had some time to just kind of chill. And so I did finish Red Sister today. Um, I am not 100% sure what I think about this book. Um, I enjoyed the plot. But I also had a little bit of a hard time 
with following this story. Um, it's kind of like it, there were some time jumps, I think, that the transitions don't come across the audio very well. Um, but I've been crocheting and playing um, Dreamlight Valley a lot, so um, just kind of doing what I'm doing instead of reading, instead of looking at it on my phone. Um, I did forget my Kindle for coming out here, and so that has been a slight hiccup that I did not plan on. Um, I do have the library copy of the physical book, but I also didn't bring that with me because I didn't want to accidentally leave it here and incur fines. Um, so here we are. Um, I'm not going to start Grey Sister right away. Um, I am going to try to read it, um, in December though, because Cassidy has, um, released what's coming next for the Backlist Book Club, and the next series is another, um, Lawrence series, um, Mark Lawrence, I believe, um, and it takes place in the same world. You don't have to read, uh, the books in any particular order as far as one series versus another, um, but at the same time, it does help you to understand the magic system a little better. So I'm going to try to do that. But that leads nicely for um, my sister and I, since we're together right now. Um, we are going to start The Nature of Witches. Um, both of us have the physical book and the audio book. Um, and so we're going to, um, listen to that, or, or read slash listen to that, um, over the next few days and hopefully have it done. Um, tomorrow is Thanksgiving in the U.S., so it's going to be an interesting, um, day. I don't know exactly, um, how much reading is going to get done. Because we basically have stuff going on all day long. Um, as you do when your family all lives pretty close to each other. So, I am going to use this time to unwind, to enjoy some reading um, before the busyness tomorrow. And I will check in later. <music>
everyone. So we have made it to Friday evening. Um, today we took some time, pulled decorations down for Christmas, and set those up. Um, helped my mom set those up so that we could um, do Christmas together on Sunday since we won't be here for Christmas. Um, along with that, I read, or I've been reading Nature of Witches. Um, my sister and I together on Wednesday night read the first, or the end of summer section in here. And then our goal today was to read Autumn, which I have done. Um, I'm really enjoying this one. This is, you have an ever witch and she's kind of scared to use her magic because when she uses her magic, those close to her suffer consequences for it. Um, but all the witches in this world are working to control the chaos of the world um so as a ever witch she has she's constantly dealing with change um one minute or when it's summer she's a summer witch when it's autumn she's an autumn witch you know and so each season as it changes she changes with the seasons as an ever witch Whereas all the other witches are bound to one season. So if you're a summer witch, your power is the strongest during summer and you feel most like yourself. The rest of the year, you're kind of a lesser version um, from what I understand. And you only have a few abilities that you control out of your season. And most of them just pertain to you yourself, I think. Um, but as I'm reading this, I definitely know why it captured um, Bookstagram and Booktube and, and, and Booktalk last year. It's just well written. Um, Rachel Griffin did a great job with it. And as you're reading... You're just thrown into the world from the beginning and you just, you want to keep knowing what happens. And so as soon as I finished um, Autumn, I messaged my sister, but she hasn't responded yet. So she may be recovering from all the peopling um, that we had to do this week um, because... She's going to have to go to work next week and people some more with children. So, I am going to set that to the side um, for right now. And I am going to pick up To Kiss a Prince by Breck Suzanne. Um, this is the Enchanted Fandom unofficial backlist pick. Um... I guess it technically is official because it's endorsed by them. But anyway, um, this is the one that as a group we're kind of reading together. Um, and um, we have um, Emmy. Emmy? She possesses the kiss of death and has been imprisoned for a decade for crimes she didn't intend to commit um, and is given an opportunity to leave prison and um, I guess like redeem herself. So, I am going to start that in just a little bit. I do want to um, play a little bit of Dreamlight Valley first because I'm at a point where I, I'm making progress. Um, 
and everything's moving forward. And so I'm really, really loving it. Um, and I kind of get like this around this time of year, um, where I'm just really enjoying my Switch. Or, well, last year and this year, because it's all I've had it. Um, so I'm going to just ride that out um, and go with it. So I will check in later with an update on To Kiss a Prince.
and she gave birth to her first son. And she wrapped him in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. So I'm going to call her later today and tell her happy birthday. Um, as you might be able to tell, I am back home now. Um, we left yesterday. Ooh. I made the really, really long drive. Um, it's 12 and a half hours driving time. But then with stops in it and time change, it came out to about 14 hours. Um... And we got home, it was 10 o'clock when we got home. Um, it, was a, it was a long drive. Um, Charleston had um, a lot of, um, had a lot of traffic, I had a lot of construction traffic. Um, there were several parts of the road where they had closed down all but one lane. Um, so, that was annoying, but otherwise, it was an uneventful trip, which was nice, um, and we had a great visit with my family, um, I did finish Nature, which is yesterday in the car, great read, um, I did get up about the time my daddy left um and read an entire section of that one the author um is just amazing at writing those transition from one part to the next and leave you wanting to keep finding out what's going on she left almost every section on some sort of cliffhanger um the only thing with that one that I had to kind of adjust my thinking for was when she talks when the main character is talking about magic um when the seasons change her magic changes as well this is not a spoiler this we find out in the very first um, section oh. um, her magic changes as well and so her 
it's always my magic, our magic. Um, and so it's kind of an interesting uh, weaving in, but I love how the book ended. Um, yeah, it was so great. So uh, that just leaves me with To Kiss a Prince um, to read for this month. Because um, not everything else has, some of my other book clubs just did not do a book or not one that I was interested in, I guess. I don't remember. I'll have to look back. Um, but I do, I did have To Kiss a Prince on my shelf, so I'm going to go on ahead and start that in just a little bit um today oh today we have a little bit going on my daughter has her winter work to do um while we are on a learning break um from um our co-op we still she has homework that was sent home though middle grade and high school tend to have homework sent home uh, over the break just because we are taking 20 or 36 weeks of work and cramming it into 27 weeks of needing um, so those upper grades do get summer work and they do get winter work um, and six weeks is a long break for many of these kids and so we do want to help keep them fresh as well. Um, even my elementary groups had a little bit of winter break learning. Um, like my history class is just reviewing over the Revolutionary War with their parents. Because um, I really only get to hit the high points of it. Um, I get about three three to four weeks of the Revolutionary War uh, oh, which in a traditional school is tons but when you only meet once a week you only get you know you're covering it in essentially the same time as one week so we hit the highlights um, real quickly they're first and second grade, um, so, um, their big thing I send home with them is to watch Liberty's Kids, um, which is a PBS special. Um, but yeah, so I am going to drink my coffee, do my Bible time, um, while my daughter, um, looks at getting started on her schoolwork. And then, after schoolwork is finished, we will, um, we have a Christmas party, uh, with a cookie exchange. So, we're going to do that, hopefully, in just a little while. Ooh, but I need coffee first. Hello, everyone. So, it is Tuesday night. Uh, we had a great time at the Christmas party. Um, the gingerbread man was super cute. That was the little play that the elementary kids did. Many of my art students were in there. Um, and um, all my younger kids wanted to show me their um, gingerbread houses, which turned out really cute. Um, but I am reading To Kiss a Prince tonight. Um, I've gotten, uh, 21% into it. I'm enjoying it so far. It is a, um, quick kind of paced book. Um, and in this so far, we have Emmy, who, um, when she was 10, um, 
somehow ends up with this power where if she, if her lips come in contact with anyone, it kills them. Um, and we get to kind of see that story. Um, and the prince has come to her to get her help. Um, to, um, restore the kingdom by putting Red Ruby's gold-plated skull, um, back where it goes. Um, there's a lot of pieces in this that kind of trying to figure out what they are, how it is that Finn and Emmy are connected, um, so lots of things going on, and while I'm really enjoying the book, I am really tired as well, I'm starting to fall asleep while reading, so I'm gonna stop for tonight and go curl up in bed, get some sleep, and hopefully tomorrow read some more of this book before I have to start uh, reading my British literature books. So, I will check in later. Hello everyone. So, it is December 3rd. Um, and I just finished To Kiss a Prince. Um, ignore my hair. I am trying something different. Um, but I just finished To Kiss a Prince. It was a really, really cute one. Um, not as much spice as I expected it to have due to where I got the book from. Since it is an enchanted fandom, those books tend to have a lot of um, spice in them. And this one didn't. Um, I mean, there's some kissing. Some intense kissing. Oh, amen. Um, but nothing really, um, out there. Um, so, we'll have to see, um, what the next one brings. This is a duology. So it's to kiss a prince and then to kill a pirate. Um, so, we're just gonna have to go with it, um, I'm kind of on the fence of grabbing To Kill a Pirate from KU. Um, it is on Kindle Unlimited. Oh. And going ahead and reading that. Or seeing if I want to um, finish or, or work on my December TBR. Um, and figure that out. So, for now, I'm going to end this vlog here. Um, and, uh, yeah. with finishing To Kiss a Prince. And then the next time you guys will see me, it will be December's Reads. So, I will see you guys next time.